championship football where tonight the district two champion dunmore bucks play host to the district four champion mount carmel area red tornadoes and let me add that the defending double a state champion mount carmel area red tornadoes up here on the carpet in Wilkesbury, in an absolutely horrendous night for football it has been raining steadily since mid-afternoon we are on an artificial surface but it's going to be a little slick the rain is coming down very hard as we speak here as the beginning of the game is about to start, Wayne. So a little bit different than we've seen all year so far. Now we finally see a game in the rain, and it's during the biggest time well, of the year. The whole season, I'll tell you what, was gorgeous football season this year for, for anybody that enjoyed football, getting out there on a Friday night to see the Tornadoes play. And I'll tell you what, it is, it is tremendous out there. Hard rain. In fact, there was a lot of lightning on the way up. Uh, coming into this game in the last two weeks, uh, Mount Carmel, as we know, 14, Line Mountain 6, and the week after that, last week, Mount Carmel 13, while losing 8, two exciting games that we've seen the Tornadoes play. On the other side of the field, the Dunmore Bucks 28, Nanakoke 17, and the district championship game, Dunmore 38, Lakeland 21. They had played Lakeland about five weeks before that, Dunmore again on the winning end of that. They are undefeated this year. Uh, 35 to 13. Uh, as we take a look uh, at this team, uh, quite size, a lot, lot of size here. Uh, looking at one person, and that is their running back, Trillio. 2,400 yards on the season, Warren. Yeah, oh yeah. This, this is a game, Trillio, of a one sided offense. Trickolo is the offense on the Buck side of the ball. Mancuso, the quarterback, will throw the ball. They have a varied offense, but if it doesn't go to Trickolo and he doesn't make the runs, Dunmore will lose his football game. It's very simple. That's, that's as easy as it gets. Stop Trickolo, win the football game. Mount Carmel area, on the other hand, of course, coming out with speed. Speed on a carpet, even a wet carpet, is going to be awesome, I right. think, tonight. I think the Bucks have to fear the speed more than they do anything. Mount Carmel area, of course, is a team who... For the most part, everyone said wouldn't have got this far this year. They said they couldn't come this far, that they weren't going to do it this year. They were young. You know, they had a lot of things happening around them. Now we see that they are here. We see that they got here. They did it by, by playing some big games. They had a couple of losses down the line, three all together, in some tough situations to AAA teams, playing a real tough schedule. And we see that I think we see that's going to be a big difference here. When we see their schedule, the Bucks, of course, playing a much lighter schedule as far as double-A and single-A goes. Well, you take a look. They play Panther Valley, Montrose, Carbondale, Lackawanna Trail, Susquehanna, uh, Western Wayne, Mid-Valley. And, and 13 kicks Harris. it off. The ball is going to scoot down to the 15-yard to the line where Sebus will pick it up on the carpet and come up. And he'll bring the ball up to the 26-yard line where Mount Carmelary will take over first and 10 and the first offensive series of this football game. Something we haven't seen. We haven't seen Nick back there on the, on the receiving on the specialty team on the kickoff in the last uh, three weeks since the Ceilings Grove game. Good to see him back there. Uh, Josh Clea was back there taking his spot and did an outstanding job in the last few weeks. Now, we expect to see some differences in the offense, and we see immediately that... No, we don't. We see that uh, Shinsky has come out. Five is over here, and he split out wide on the left side as Veach and immediately loses his footing and only moves it to the 27-yard line where it'll bring up a second down and nine, and that's the first indication that this turf is suffering from the heavy rains. Well, number 28, uh, uh, Tricolo, is playing in the defensive end of the, uh, the ball here, and as uh, soon as uh, John got the ball, uh, Tricolo, Brett, was already moving in his direction, so he might be the key. They might be keyed up man to man. Shinsky brings him up. He's going to throw it deep to Veach. Veach tries to cut back. A lot of guys waiting for him. He's only going to pick up another yard or so. Should bring up a third and eight now for the Red Tornadoes as the Bucks kind of stood there, didn't give ground, and didn't allow that cutback. Well, one thing we're going to have to do, like we a little bit uh, later on in the game last week against Wild Losing, we had to come back with some misdirection plays to pick up some first downs, and we're going to have to do the same thing here. Uh, we see Trickolo now already, the linebacker keying on Jonathan. Wherever he goes, he mirrors him. 
Shinsky goes back to pass. He's looking at, at Sebus, and he's got him. Sebus caught it at the 45, and he's still up. Tricklow's going to bring him down, but Sebus takes the ball into Dunmore Buck territory all the way down to the Dunmore Buck 43-yard line where it's first and 10, and a nice play that time in that Sebus came back to the ball after watching where it was going to end up at. He actually came back and then cut around the uh, the, co the coverage guy and picked up additional yardage. That double coverage on Sebus that time down into the flat area. It's time to Bailey up the middle. Bailey's only going to pick a yard up on the play. It'll bring up a second down and nine for the Red Tornadoes. Ball down about the 42-yard line of the Bucks. First big play of the game, of course, Shinsky to Sebus. I don't know what the size of uh, Dunmore's line is. Uh, looks like it's one of the bigger, one of the bigger uh, defensive lines we have seen. Defensively, they will come out in a, and switch around during the game at any one point in time. They'll run a 4-4-5 defense. This guy, Mshinsky, looks to pass. He passes it to Clea. Clea's going to take it over to 40, down close to the 35-yard line, where it's going to bring up a third and short for a big red. Nice pass play that time from Shinsky to Clea. Now there, there you go. They're keying on everybody else. And uh, there's Josh out here on the flat. Catches the pass, picks up, you know, five, six, seven yards on the play. Takes pressure off of each and Bailey. Third and one now for Big Red. Ball sitting at the 39-yard line of the Bucks. This time we go to Veach. Veach cuts it outside. Veach will pick up the first down, number 31 for the Bucks. Galley takes him out of bounds, but it's going to be enough for the first down. It'll be first and 10, Mount Carmel area. I'll tell you what, he got a terrible spot that time. He was he was already a yard and a half past the 35-yard mark, and the referee comes in, steps in where uh, John went out of bounds and placed the ball down on the field. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm seeing where they, well, I can't really tell now, though. I can see where one guy's standing. I mean, where he, where he got initially hit and advanced the ball, it was a first down. I don't know where they placed it at, but it was a first down. I have all the confidence in the world of calling that when I saw it there. No, we're going to be short. No, we're not. It's first no, and first ten. Down. down along the Mount Carmel area sideline there. We were kind of, and then we just tripped somebody with the, <laughs> with the chains. But, but it's a first down. Mount Carmel area is showing some strength here in the opening offensive series of the evening here in the start of the big show. Shinsky brings him up. This time he's gonna he's gonna have no one in the backfield. Sebus comes in motion now over to the left side of the formation, and he's gonna bring Veach back, and Veach cuts it back and picks up about four yards on the play. Should bring a second and six up when they put the ball down. Nice play that Good time, play. Wayne. Excellent play. They, they jumped into a four defense. It looked like a gap. They had uh, uh, the corner man came up a little bit closer on the right on our right hand side of, the, uh, of their defense. And Veach comes back in a misdirection play. Everything else went, ran to the right. Uh, Sebus went to the right or to the left, and Veach comes back to the right through the hole. 9.24 remaining here in the first quarter. This time it's Bailey cracking it up the middle. Bailey's going to take it down to the 25 yard line. Great play. Uh, Bailey special, of course, going straight up the middle, taking that uh, middle linebacker on. Going to bring up a third down and two now, a long two. I'm sorry, a short two, more like a long one. Just, hey, Nobbs. I got, we have Nobbs in the booth for the first time, and already he's looking at me here now. I got, I'm, there's going to be trouble in here. This time it's Veach. Veach still moving, and Veach picks oh, up the first down, excellent. ladies and gentlemen. First and ten, Mount Carmel area. Great second effort on Jonathan Veach. He, he gets through the initial uh, hit on the line, uh, Stackle about two yards down, and is another lunge off of Jonathan picks up an extra yard, yard and a half. And, and this is the type of game that you need that extra effort. Look at right here. There you go. Brings up a first and 10 ball sitting on the Dunmore 21 yard line. Beach in the handoff. Oh. Beach will take it down and pick up about two yards on the play, maybe three, taking it to about the 18 yard line of the Bucks. It'll bring up a second down and seven now for Mount Carmel. A little bit more misdirection play at this point in the game than what we had seen last week. Uh, and, and it's showing a lot of success. Uh, Dunmore apparently is looking to the outside game that we've run in the last against Wyalusing and Line Mountain trying to get to the outside. Now we're coming back with an inside attack. 
Pitch out to Veach. He cuts it back. Nice. Nice cut back by Veach. He's going to take it down to the 16-yard line. Matt Booker has a nice kick out block there from the pulling guard position on the tight end for Jonathan Veach to get up through. Pick up that. Did he? No. Pick up five yards up on a that. Third and five. Third and five now for Big Red. The ball just outside the Dunmore 15 yard line. Sevis and Shinsky come into the lineup. The big tight end lumbers off. And he lumbers back on. <laughs> so the big tight end has done a lot of lumbering here in this one play. Sebus in motion. We're going to pitch it to Sebus, and Sebus is going to try to turn the corner. He's, he gets around oh, the oh, corner, but he's going to be brought down oh, in a nice tackle a by late. Tricolo that time. Tricolo just got him as he was turning the corner. He's going to be short of that first down. It's going to bring up a fourth down. Fourth and five. I'd say a yeah, short five. Fourth and a short five. The ball sitting squarely on the 15-yard line of the Bucks. Right here, half a step. And, and Sevis is around the corner. He probably would have picked up the first down on that. Yeah, Tricolo made a real nice defensive play that time to save the first down. This time Shinsky's going to look to pass. He looks into the end zone where Sevis, or Clea, I'm sorry, Clea. Clea was covered by number 82, Gallagher, on the play. And Mount Carmel area will turn the ball over on downs as the Bucks have stopped him at the 15-yard line. Good play. You got Josh Clay, 82, has to be their defensive end, trying to cover Josh, who has a lot of speed down there. Uh, the ball was a little unthrown. And unfortunately, uh, Josh could not turn around and get back to the ball. Dunmore will start out here at the 628 mark of the first quarter on their first offensive series. 25 in the background is Igo. 28, of course, is the ball carrier, and he is Tricolo, and he has the ball to start the game. He takes it up to the 20-yard line, just over the 20-yard line for almost a six-yard gain. It'll bring up a second and four for the Bucks. Yeah, this, he's going to be a tough runner. He's going to be something similar to uh, uh, the quarterback from uh, Line Mountain. Very difficult to bring down. You're going to really have to hit him and, and wrap your arms and bring him down on the initial hit. We said the, the Bucks have a nice passing game. They have some big receivers, but they are not going to pass unless they feel they need to. Again to Tricolo, right up the middle. Tricolo with the ball, and he'll pick up a first down, I believe, depending where they yeah. mark it at. He kind of stumbled around at the end there, but yes, it's going to be first and ten for the Bucks. It's two big plays by Tricolo. Open up the first offensive series for Dunmore. Uh, Tricolo's a, a big boy. He's not super fast, and, and if you take a look at his, at his stats, like Jose said, he's, he, he doesn't kill you with the big ones. Uh, he has an average that, you know, maybe pick up five, six, seven yards, but he carries the ball mostly all night long. Again, the Tricolo, or I'm sorry, I go this time, the, the, the top back, I go, and he comes right through the middle, takes the ball up to the 40-yard line, where once again it is first and ten for the Bucks as they are moving right in the center of the Mount Carmel area line. Again, you know, we have to learn now tonight that we have to stay in position. We can't go for uh, any type of motion. Uh, our linebackers have to stay home and just protect their area. Tricolo. And this time Tricolo is going to be stopped dead at the 40-yard line or so. He may pick up a half yard on the play. It'll bring up a second down and nine. Yusenchek in on that. Yeah, Yusenchek. So Ziggler. Or no, uh, Mimiki Morose. So they stopped the big back there finally, bringing up a second down and a long nine for the first down. The ball sitting at the Dunmore 40 yard line. 450 remaining here in the first quarter. This time we give it to number two as he comes around the end here, and he's got some running room, and he's free. Monahan and Monahan down the sideline. He'll be taken out by Bailey, but not before he brings the ball down to the 33-yard line of Mount Carmel area where he stepped out. He took a big hit from Bailey when he finally got down, but he's down all the way to the 33-yard line of Mount Carmel area on a big run by Jamie Monahan. That was a, just a motion play. Uh, pitch back to him. He had uh, uh, Tricolo and, and, the, and Igo leading the block along with the uh, guard there and uh, gets through the hole between the tackle and the end and takes off. Tricolo 
And again, such a hard back. He just keeps squirting through the line. He takes it down all the way to the Mount Carmel 28-yard line. He is just one tough guy to bring down, which we had told you, over 2,000 yards rushing this Two, year. 2,400 in the last uh, two playoff games, if I'm not mistaken, he had about 450 yards uh, in the district playoffs. Second and five. It's time the up back I go, and I go is going to be stopped at the 16 or the 26 yard line. Pick up about two yards on the play. It'll bring up a third down and three for the Bucks. They send in a, a bigger group here. Carlucci comes into the game. They bring in a, a tight end, a different tight and, uh, end. Gavala, the tight end 85. So they got their. They're big guys up here. And they go into a power eye formation to try to get this three yards as they shift a little bit into a straight power eye. And again, Tricolo, and Tricolo is going to pick up the first down. You are very close to it. As, he's, as he is, you're going to have a first down at the 22-yard line of Mount Carmel area as the Dunmore Bucks continue to answer with their first offensive series. Tricolo showing exactly you know what he's done to pick up his 2,400 yards. He's very strong in this series, coming all the way down the field, carrying the ball. Uh, you know, he's, it's not that he's not being hit in the, in the line. There's not much of a hole there, but uh, he's turning his body, and with his strength, he's picking up, you know, four or five yards at a time. Tricolo again. Tricolo crosses the line of scrimmage. He's going to be brought down eventually by both Sebus and Yasenchak but not before he picks up a good five yards in a play, bringing up second and five now to ball at the 16-yard line of Mount Carmel area. Tricolo so far proving to be unstoppable here in the early going of this football game. Well, it's Tricolo again, and Tricolo just continues to batter the Mount Carmel defense as he puts it down to the five-yard line where it's first and goal from the five for the Dunmore Bucks. And there's nothing fancy about this, Wayne. This is no. right between the tackles. They're not yeah. trying to do anything different here. No, it's just all straight dive. They're All they're doing is, is trap locking down inside the line there. They're, they're putting a little bit of hole. Number 25, you see coming, uh, Igo kicking out on the end. And, and if you take a look at uh, uh, Tricolo, as soon as he's ready to be hit by the defensive back, he lowers his shoulder for some extra power. They put the two fullbacks in both Igo and 25, I, or I go on Carlucci, but they decide not to go that way now and call a timeout as they're on the five yard line. A timeout comes at the 206 mark for the first quarter of this football game, and Dunmore showing that uh, that running game is for real so far tonight, Wayne. Well, I'll tell you, their line is really controlling the defensive line on the Tornadoes. Uh, we have to do a little bit of maybe stunning on defense, block up the holes a little bit, maybe some, uh, some blitzing. Uh, by our linebackers, and the only place they have they have run uh, so far right down the field is off tackle, like you said. Nothing up to center, nothing through the uh, through the guard hole. Everything's just been tackle to tackle, and and uh, I goes either carrying the ball or uh, trickle out one or the other. Now it's been nothing fancy here in the rain, and I, and I stress again, the rain continues to pummel this field here tonight. It is raining heavy. It has from the opening kickoff, and nothing has changed since that moment. As here. The Bucks line up at the five-yard line for first and goal, and they still have that large unit in there when they bring in 41 Carlucci as the extra fullback, and the two big tight ends are lined up out there. Right to Tricolo again, and this time Tricolo has stopped dead. In fact, he stopped a little short of the line of scrimmage. He'll bring up a second down and five once again for the touchdown. Nice play by Big Red as they completely jammed the middle up. There you see it in slow-mo. You can see the entire middle of the Mount Carmel area defense responding to Tricolo as he tries to go up the middle. Same formation as we saw before. Now the straight eye with Igo leading Tricolo. Brings Monaghan in motion, and again, Tricolo. This time Tricolo's going to try to get outside, and he's not going to do it. John Veach says no go. Again, no gain on the play. Third and goal from the five. 
Nice play that Great. time by Veach, Wayne. Great play by Veach. John came up uh, as as quick as he possibly could, and and uh, Trickolo's looking to get to the outside on that play. He wasn't even trying to get uh, off tackle. He uh, had seen in the last play how the Tornadoes defensively had blocked up the hole, and uh, you know he tried to kick to the outside, and of course John comes up, makes the tackle. Third and goal now, and it's actually a little bit further from the five. This time we're going to give it to Monahan coming around the end, and. Monahan is going to be right back to the exact line of scrimmage again as we look at number 52 for Mount Carmel area popping off there. David who? Oh, I was oh, going to changed. say Brenner. We changed. I'm looking for 52. I didn't yeah, see it so there. That's what I picked up my roster for. He changed his number from <laughs> okay, sorry 31. About that, folks. But the nice play by, by Rose who turned him into him. Yeah. And you can see here in the replay that uh, they had it well covered as Monaghan was not going around the end and then tried to cut back around Moreau's, and it wasn't going to happen. Was there a flag on that play for him? Want to bring up fourth down from just, just outside the five-yard line. The line of scrimmage has not changed on any of these no. downs. All three downs, they were stuffed at the line. A big fourth down. The Bucks decide to go for it in the heavy weather. Maybe not trusting their kicking game. And we see a little bit different formation now as Tricolo goes in motion. And we're going to see a pass play here as they're going to cover. And oh, my goodness. Let me see who comes off of there. Ziggler. Ziggler in a giant defensive play by Ziggler. And the quarterback is knocked to the ground. Mancuso had no chance whatsoever to make that play work, ladies and gentlemen. And Ziggler in the big red defense respawned big time at the five-yard line. The line of scrimmage now all the way back at the Mount Carmel area 11-yard line where they take over first and 10. I'll tell you what, Ziggler strung him out, strung him out there, and then got around the blocker and put on a burst of speed. And I don't think the quarterback realized how fast Ziggler was. Shinsky will bring him up. Pitch out to Veach as Veach tries to come around the end. Number 15. Judge and he just would not move. Robert Judge, they were trying to shove him out of the way and he just didn't move. And he's going to drop Veach for a three yard loss. It'll bring up a second and 13 from the Mount Carmel area eight yard line. Some good lateral pursuit uh, as we had seen. Veach tried to get to the outside in the last series, the first series of downs that we had the ball and uh, could not. And uh, again, this time they have great pursuit. The defensive end string everything out. The linebackers are already in motion. We've seen that up at uh, Wild Losing last week uh, where the defensive backs or linebackers would automatically go into a sprint, not looking for a hole, but at least contain to the outside and bring everybody back in. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the first quarter of play here at Wilkes-Barre Memorial Stadium with the score of Mount Carmel Area 0 and the Dunmore Bucks 0. And gives me a chance to remind you that this is WKMC-TV. We're broadcasting you directly from the campus at Mount Carmel Area High School over a fiber optic system. We are an instruct instructional fixed television service. Joe Knobs got in the way that time. I'm not taking credit for that. He's putting a lot of pressure on me here in the booth. And, of course, you catch us every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, Channel 13, courtesy of the Service Electric Cable System. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, WKMC-TV is live at 7.30 in the morning on Channel 13 on all school days. If you need to know what's happening at Mount Carmel area, you need to be tuned in at 7.30 a.m., Channel 13, and you'll find it all out. We had about 
eight of the 11 guys moving, I think, on offense that time. So it's an illegal motion call against Big Red. It's going to push him even farther back. And the ball will be just about the four-yard line, and it'll bring up a second down and 17 now for Mount Carmel area, deep in their own territory. Shinsky drops back to pass in his own end zone. Going He's looking to receive us. And it's intercepted, intercepted by number 82, I believe, on the play. Adam Gallagher on the interception. And we threw that time into triple coverage as Sebus, everybody looked at Sebus as he ran down the field and converged on him. So the first big turnover of the night here, and it's going to be Mount Carmel area's mistake as the Bucks will take over first and 10 at Mount Carmel area's 32-yard line. Look at the center of that field. It's completely wide open. Everybody went in Sebus's motion. Uh, the, the guy that was keying on him, plus the cornerback and the, and the free safety were back there on him. Hands to Tricolo again, and Tricolo is absolutely stuffed at the line of scrimmage. He gains no yardage, brings up a second down and 10 now for the Bucks. Now take a look at the last defensive series down on the five yard line uh, for the Tornadoes when they stopped the Bucks uh, on that goal line stance there. Uh, I think they've figured out that Dunmore is only running three types of plays, and that's the Tricolo either right or left. I go up to center or they're giving it to Mon uh, Monaghan around the, the left side on a pitch. This time it's going to be a pass play. I go the only, I'm sorry, I go up the middle. He was the only back in the backfield, and I go is going to only gain a yard on the play. Should bring up a third down and they're going to, I'm going to say third down and 10. He had actually lost a yard on that first play. It was, it was actually second and 11. It will bring up a third and 10 as I go gained about a yard. And Mount Carmel area has all of a sudden said nothing will run up the middle yeah. from here on in. In a play where they, they split Tricolo out to the right side in, in a pass formation, I thought maybe we were looking to see that. We'll see what they do here. But here it looks like a standard eye formation as I go in front of Tricolo. And Mancuso sets down, and he hands it to Tricolo, and Tricolo bounces off a little bit, but he's not going to bounce that far, and it's going to bring up a fourth down for the Bucks, yeah. as they have gone absolutely nowhere in this offensive series. One thing on the, on the last three plays, four plays that Tricolo had uh, carried the ball, he's not showing that confidence of running up through the line. He he hits the line, there's nothing there, and he's not plowing through it. He stops and he's he stops dead in his tracks, and now he's looking to get around to the outside. And he's not the type of player to do that. He's one that has to has to force himself through the hole and pick up his five six yards straight ahead. Fourth down and nine now for the Bucks. He has a split back formation and he goes back to pass. Ooh, almost Dave. He's Shot gonna he's gonna go up the middle. Bailey's gonna catch him, but he's gonna give the ball up. That's not a first no. down, ladies and gentlemen. Mount Carmel area has stopped the Bucks on the turnover, and the defense now is starting to take over the game for Big Red. Well, that play there, Dave Schoffler almost uh, had the quarterback fumbling the ball as Schoffler passed him out, and the quarterback passed Pats. Schoffler grabbed his arm and he he almost fumbled it, kept the ball and, and picked up three yards on that play. First and 10 for Mount Carmel area. Ball sitting at the 20-yard line. Beach. Up over the 20-yard line to the 21-yard. We have a second down and nine on the play. Number 15, Robert Judge on the play. And Judge playing a good defensive football game here for the Bucks. Well, let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, it's just two days, the Bucks season, so. It's time. Yeah, kill one now. It's time. Let's bag a buck. Pitch out to Veach, trying to get Veach to the sideline. He cuts back. He's still on his feet. And Veach brings it up over the 25-yard line. He'll be put down at the 28-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and probably about four, it looks like, where they place it. Good interior blocking. Now, we had the blocking to the outside, and John tries to kick to the outside. Ooh, holding. But holding penalty, Wayne, on the, on the play. Big Red's going to march back now as penalties have hurt Big Red twice here in the second quarter. 9-19 remaining here in the second quarter of play That's at good. soggy Wilkesbury Memorial. Take us back to the 11-yard line. But again, on, on, the, on that play, there, there was enough of space between the pursuit to the outside and the tackle position that, that John could break up through the center. Hopefully that will occur again. Second down and 19 now 
for Big Red as they bring the ball of the ball sitting at the 11 yard line. Sebus now at quarterback in the shotgun formation and Sebus is gonna run the ball as he comes up over the 15 down to the 18 yard line. First time we've seen that play tonight, ladies and gentlemen, where Nick Sebus has returned to the quarterback position the first time since he broke that hand back in the Sealings Grove game. And what that gives you, it gives you one extra blocker in the way of John Veach. Uh, with uh, Sebus back there, we got student body going to the right again, something we haven't seen since the Sealings Grove game. The extra blocker out there is enough to have Sebus spring and pick up almost 10 yards on that play. He's up a third down now and 12 for Big Red. Ball sitting at the 18-yard line. And Shinsky's going to go back to pass. He's going to be under pressure. He's looking at Van Doren. I'm sorry, but he gets uh, Bailey. Bailey. And Bailey brings it over to 30-yard line where it'll be a first down, ladies and gentlemen. It's first and 10, Big Red. I applaud that call. I'll tell you what, how many times this season we had seen that against Mount Carmel. And that's only a delayed uh, back out of the field, out of the backfield. And, and now we run it, uh, you know, to, to our advantage, uh, hitting Sebus. A nice little touch pass. Here you pass see Sebus. See Sebus coming uh, out. He's watching the ball. He had a, a Van Doren yeah. turns and blocks for him. A nice yeah. play by Van Doren. But that's exactly how you set up that fullback coming out of the backfield. Pitch it back to Veach. Veach coming over the right side. Veach is still moving, still moving, He's got to still the moving. Veach over the 45-yard line up to the 46-yard line of Mount Carmel area. And now the, the offense starting to show some speed. One thing I will say, we've said this a hundred times, I'm going to say it again. The one place the Dunmore Bucks will seriously lack tonight, it will be in speed. Right. If you can break past the line of scrimmage, no one is catching you. Well, we're, we're starting to pick up the defensive key blocks here. That's what the key, that's what the best thing is. Again, pitch to Veach this time the other way as Veach will pick his way through and bring it up just about midfield where it'll bring up a second down and seven now for the Red Tornadoes. You know, you got the defensive line in that first series of plays uh, stunning. They have uh, some motion going one way uh, or the other. They're doing some swim moves and everything else on that first series that we carried the ball and moved it. And we still moved the ball successfully down the field. Now we're starting to, to look for that, you know, and, and once you look for that, your, your blocking assignments are much easier. Shinsky in the shotgun formation. He's looked a lot of time. He throws it all the way down the field to Sebus, and Sebus catches it, ladies and gentlemen, all the way down at the Dunmore 28-yard line, and a fabulous catch by Sebus and a great throw by Shinsky. I'll tell you what. We had what we wanted, and that was the one-on-one -on -one coverage with Sebus over on the right-hand side there, and it was a mirror image of the play that we pulled last week against Wild Lucing. Here you see and it. Look at the time, Wayne. Here's, yeah, the, here's the replay. It. And the offensive line just gave... Uh, uh, Dave, so much time to throw the ball, and there's Sebus going up as high as he could to catch it. First and 10, big red from the 28-yard line. Bailey with the ball, and Bailey cutting up the field now, and Bailey's going to pick up five yards on the play and bring up a second and five as now the Mount Carmel offense again begins to assert itself here in the second period of play. There's 6.37 left here in the second quarter. Well, they have to capitalize here on, on this. Uh, we have seen over the last uh, two weeks or so that we get down inside that red zone and we have just a little bit difficult. It, it is difficult for the blocking assignments down there. The field gets a little bit shorter. Uh, but now this time. It's time to pitch to Veach. He's coming around the left side. He's picking up nice yardage. He's going to fall about a yard short of the first down where they, when they place the ball just about a yard. He's very close, very close. In fact, he may have it. This may be a first down, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, as we call for, Frank, no, first Frank, down. Frank calls it. If you take a look on that play, uh, he was open to the outside. John could have broken to the outside. He followed his blockers up. He knows that the key is the first down, uh, nothing more And uh, at this point in the game, and we pick it up. Clea comes into the ball game replacing uh, Yasenchak as we put some speed back in the football game. We put... Clea and Van Doren far right in the formation, but hand it to Veach. Veach oh, right up the middle. Up the middle. Veach is still moving. It's a touchdown, it's a ladies touchdown. and gentlemen. Touchdown, Mount Carmel area. Excellent blocking in the center of that line. Beautiful trap block inside the center. Picked up on the linebackers, and Veach untouched right from the point of the handoff right into the end zone. Oh, that was a, just a pretty play that time. Split everybody out. Had the had the offense on both you know both sides yep. lined out. As we see Thomas lining up here 
with the extra point attempt, and I can't even describe to you the angle I have at this one, so I'm never going to try to call this. Mount Carmel in their standard extra point uh, formation as they'll now move over and line up and give Thomas a shot at that extra point. Bailey will hold it right at the 10-yard line. Oh, and it's blocked, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Thomas has it blocked. They didn't see who came in, although I believe it's 52. It is. Timothy Early blocks the extra point. But nonetheless, Mount Carmel area now pops out to a 6-0 lead. And the, the offense really starting to assert itself. And you're starting to see some of the speed take over in this football game. Uh Uh, sorry, boss. It was either that or hit my head off of that goalpost. All I know is pulling those cables made me real hungry, boss. I bet that Silver Bowl is longer than any stadium in the coal region. Okay, okay. Settle down, buddy. You know they're all the same. 1,000 feet. Now, what's this place here? Ah, the Vine Street Sandwich Shop. How about we give this place a try? <laughs> Uh, hey, boss, I'm really hungry. Oh, boy, oh, boy, I'm really hungry, boss. What do they got? What do they got? Uh, boss, uh, boss? Well, if you'd be quiet for one second there, fella, the young lady will help you out. How about a pan of our hot, delicious pizza made to order with toppings of your choice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy, I really want that. Oh, yeah, I want one, I want one. I really do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or how about one of our many scrumptious hoagies? We have a full selection of hot or cold subs made from the largest selection of cold cuts and cheeses in Mount Carmel. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah boss, I want that. Give me that. One of them. Yeah, one of them, boss. Calm down, fella. Relax. Let's see what else she has. There's nothing as good as our Vine Street chef salads or as tasty as these old-fashioned gravy fries. I can't take it anymore. Give me one of everything! Yeah, 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 You see a lot of enthusiasm down there on the offensive side, but I think it came from the defensive end where the Bucks get, get an interception on about the 30, 35 yard line and could not move the ball down the field at all with Tricolo. Tricolo was stopped. We hold them on a fourth and three. We take the ball over and drive back down the field. Uh, again, I think that's just a shift of momentum coming from the defensive side of the field to the offensive side. And, uh, that's great. We haven't seen that all season long. Touchdown occurred at the 532 mark of the second quarter. Johnny Veach is 13 for 58 yards already this evening in the first quarter, and Tricolo is 11 for only 35 yards, and this is a kid that has uh, run in the last two playoff games for over 250 yards. Senchak puts it down there, number set, or four, I'm sorry, number four, and he's dropped immediately oh, by an everybody, Matsura, number 21. 21, Matsura, the big guy, comes down, and Matsura has always had his name called on these kind of plays. 
He always he always has a tendency to tattoo his shoulder pad numbers onto somebody, no matter who we're playing. But he does an excellent job on that specialty team going down there, cutting around in the back of the, uh, the blocking form and making that hit. The Bucks will take over on their own 27-yard line, where it'll be first and ten. Oh, and Tricolo again stopped, ladies and gentlemen, for no yardage. That is the fourth time Tricolo has carried the ball and gained no yardage on the play. Vinci Yasenchak again comes up from his linebacker position, and it seems like now that the linebackers know exactly what they have to do between him and Bailey. They have to fill the hole before Tricolo gets through the line of scrimmage, and the two of them are making the initial hits and the stops at the line of scrimmage. Brings up a second down and exactly 10 to go once again for the Bucks. As Mancuso brings him up. This time Mancuso goes back to pass. He's got a lot of time and he's looking over on the sideline, but I don't think he caught it. No, it's incomplete. It'll bring up a third and 10. He was trying to get number 82, Adam Gallagher, but he was just short. He had all the time to throw it, but Gallagher was well covered, and he tried to get it at the sideline there and just doesn't have the arm, I think, to get that I, kind of strength I'll tell you there. what, I really don't think he does either. If you take a look at the type of pass, it was it, it was a wobbly pass, although it's a, it's a wet field tonight, and for a quarterback that hasn't thrown uh, much, I think uh, 96 attempts all season long is not much during the season. Uh, you know, for him to come into this type of playoff game and, and now attempt to do that is very difficult. And Cuso fakes it, hands it to, to Tricolo. Tricolo now has gotten the first down as he was a delayed handoff to Tricolo. A nice play that time, which beat Mount Carmel as they were collapsing on Mancuso. Tricolo takes it out to the 40-yard line where it's first and 10 for the Bucks. but a nice play by Hensies that time. Of course, Jack Hensies is a guy we know for uh, many times over the past couple of decades, and he is a quality football coach, and that time was a nice offensive play by the Bucks. Yeah, it was a, it was a delayed halfback, and actually was a slashback to the left-hand side. It was a misdirection play. This time we Ooh, fumble, we fumbled fumbled it. on the ground. Mount Carmel area's recovered, I believe. Oh. Let's see. We had we had it. Ziegler was on top of yep. it, squirted it out. But let's see. The ball's at the 35-yard line, and I don't know. Mount we... Carmel area has recovered the football, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Schaffler. Dave Schaffler comes up, number 71 with the ball. <laughs> the big Excellent. man. Some great hits there. Again, it was it was sort of looked like a, a, a timing type handoff play, but I think the initial hit comes from. Here's the here's the the replay. As actually, they bobbled it, but look, I can't Yesenchak, see. Yesenchak, Yesenchak caused it. Comes yep. in. Y Yesenchak caused it, and uh, that's where the fumble happened. As they were trying to make an inside handoff to number two, Monahan. Yeah. Mount Carmel sets up at the 35-yard line of the Bucks, and Shinsky right back in the passing formation, looks down the field, and it's blocked. Or I don't know what. Now there's a play that I would wonder about the. Uh, Ball was blocked. I didn't see who did it, and he actually released it extremely low. I'm yeah, not sure he where he was heading with that one. It'll bring up a second and ten from the 35, but I, I'm not sure if somebody just grabbed his arm or what exactly happened to him there. He j it just didn't seem like he was back far enough. There was so much pressure defensively uh, that the defensive line was already up in the air, and he couldn't see the receiver. 4.09 remaining here in the second quarter. Mount Carmel out to a 6 nothing lead over the Bucks. They have the ball in Buck territory at the and 35. We split everybody into gaps. We send Veach in motion, but we're going to hand it off to Sebus coming around, and Sebus is going to pick up about four yards on the play. Number 63, Matthew Mendola making the play for the Bucks. All we need at that time was one block. If it, it, you know, it, you watch the line of scrimmage there, one block for, for Sebus to get to the outside, and this whole left side down the hash to the uh, goal line, there was nobody there from Dunmore. Brings up a third now, and it's about seven. It's, it's a short seven or so for the first down, a ball sitting at the buck 32-yard line. This time, Shinsky goes back to pass again. Nice coverage. He's looking over, and he was heading for Van Doren, but was high on the play, and it will bring up a fourth down, and Mount Carmel area now will decide what they want to do here deep in Buck territory to 32, and I believe they're going to probably go for it here. Okay, so I'm just trying to <laughs> everybody turn around look at me like I was nuts. <laughs> I'm not used to this many people in the booth there. We're going to have problems there. 
course, we have Jose with us tonight, gang. That's why you're getting these on-the-spot stats. Don't think for a second that Wayne and I have gotten good enough to start tallying stats as we talk. We have enough trouble just talking. But Jose will be up, and Jose is going to read you and, and give you these first-half stats again at halftime, so look forward to that. Nobody in the backfield now for Shinsky as he drops back to pass. He's looking and looking downfield, and he was looking for number 37 on, on, on the play, Kerpich. Kerpich slipped a little bit as he was reaching for the ball, and Mal Carmelari will turn the ball over on, on the uh, downs. But a nice, uh, a nice play that time. Again, we're looking down the middle here. Time remaining in the second period, of course, is 3 minutes and 20 seconds as the Bucks take over at their 32-yard line. The key now, the Mount Carmel area defense, of course, seems to be controlling the game since early in the first quarter. The, the Bucks mounted a great drive all the way down to the yeah. five-yard line, got stuffed, and, has, and since well, that time have done nothing offensively. With the score the way it is, I, I would assume that they're going to come out with some different type of plays now. Well, here's a different one here. We haven't seen that one up in a while. We give it to Tricolo, and Tricolo's still moving, and that was a nice play by Tricolo. Unbelievable. It, it's hard to believe that we can make three guys hit him on the line of scrimmage all at one time, and he still squirts through and picks up eight yards on that type of play. Well, picks up about, let's see, let's, we seven or, it's, he picked up about seven, seven on it. It's a long three there. That's more like four almost. But, again, there's a formation we hadn't seen so right. much where we lined up a little bit to the right of the formation and had two guys in front of them as they're trying to do everything they can now to get Trickolo some room here to run. Trickolo goes in, in motion this time. Ziegler, oh, oh my, my goodness, Ziegler is going to put the quarterback down along with 69 cuff. Mancuso never had a no. chance to, to do anything on the play and a big loss for the Bucks. And again, we went back to this way in the beginning. We'll say it now as you see it. The Bucks are not a passing no. team. It's not something they're comfortable doing and that you're seeing. Watch the, watch the rush here from 40, Ziegler, and up the middle will come 69. But Ziegler puts the initial pressure. And you can see he had no chance yeah, to throw the ball. It's good defensive coverage by the backs because the quarterback cannot, cannot find his receivers. And you could see the inexperience of the quarterback not being able to throw the ball out of bounds. It's the third down and about 17 now as they give it to Tricolo. And Tricolo tries to pick his way up the field. Yasenchak will bring him down. He fumbled it as he went down. The ball is going to be placed down at the 34-yard line where it will be fourth down and about nine. So the big loss by the quarterback again shoots the Bucks down as they have to turn the ball over. And we will see, I think, the first punt of the football game tonight by the Bucks as Mount Carmel area's defense has just completely put up a stone wall now for the Bucks. They have not been able to penetrate the line of scrimmage very much here from about midway in the first quarter. Now, I'll tell you, it, you know, in this defense uh, in the two playoff games has, has definitely stepped up and shown that they can stop whoever the lead rusher is for the opponent team. Uh, we, we went against, I guess Henninger was supposed to be the, the man in, against Lime Mountain, and uh, we stopped him cold. He, he carried the ball once or twice in the first series. We readjusted to him, and, we, and he only ended up with uh, maybe 50 yards, uh, 45 yards for the game that night. Uh, Straub was the one then that, that took over, but I think right. he tired out towards the end because then we sort of start containing him. Uh, the defense now, again, and, and what's great about this and we've talked about this all season long but you can see the experience now after all these games coming through the regular season how this defensive team readjusts to whatever's going on on the field and can do it very quickly. Benevich back to, to kick and he's the, large, the largest kicker we've seen all year. Look at the size of this guy for crying out loud. And he takes a nice kick. He takes a bullet back to Vichu. Let's it go through his hands a little bit and he's going to be down inside the 20-yard line at the Mount Carmel area 19, and that that was an absolute yeah. bullet of a kick. It never got more than eight <laughs> feet off the ground, but my goodness, did it have some force. And we looked at Bonevich. He's at, listed as a tight end, and he's 235 pounds, and he put all, all every pound of it into that kick. He had a little bit of difficulty uh, catching the ball that time. Uh, not that there was any pressure, and, and I'm sure the ball is wet down there and, and difficult to handle. 141 remaining here in the first half as Shinsky brings him up. He's got Bailey as the lone back in the backfield, and he'll hand it to Bailey, and there's a whistle on the play. Uh, Mount Carmel area, I'm sure, is going to be called here for probably a motion penalty, and we'll look and see what Mr. D'Angelo says, and he says timeout by time the out. Bucks. That's a very odd timeout as they saw something they weren't sure about and called a timeout before Mount Carmel area was able to run the football. So you don't often catch them by surprise, but that time they were. 
and they call timeout. So Coach Williams into the lineup, and of course, he'd dearly love to have us pop one out here. It's been kind of a trademark this year in that last minute of the first half all the time. We're the most dangerous probably of the half. So Well, the thing there is you get a little lax when you get towards the end of the half. You're thinking, well, you know, the other team's going to let up a little bit. And with the speed that we have and and, and the blocking that we are now putting on the defensive team here, uh, you might see something. We, You know, th like you said, they've done it all season long. Uh, you know, they get down to this point and they just happen to pop one. It continues to rain, but not quite as intensely as it had at the beginning of the football game, but still coming down at a pretty good clip here. The field does not show a lot of problems. It's a fairly new field. When we played on this field, well, was it, I'll say about 1994, it was a much different field. It was hard as a rock back then. This one is a new field, and it seems to be draining very well. Ashinsky puts Sebus in motion. He Pass pitches play. to Sebus, and Sebus is going to try to throw the ball, and now yeah, decides that why should he run. throw it when he can run it. And he comes all the way up to the 30-yard well, line. He's still on his feet at the 30. Oh, he, he gets to the outside. Back and he can get around one guy, and he didn't. But number 28, that was Tricklow that actually made the tackle. But yeah. a great play by Sebus, and you can see just how dangerous number five is. And he just put on a show for you as he takes the ball up to the 37-yard line where it's first and 10, Mount Carmel area. Uh, great, great play here. Some excellent blocking after the, after the fact when the line saw that... Uh, you know, Sebus had taken off with the ball. If you take a look at the water that's splashing around, the, the field is containing the water and holding it, but the footing is, is quite well. Yeah, that, now that time you saw Sebus slip a little bit on his cut, but for the most part, uh, he's running pretty well, and, and Mount Carmel area calls a timeout now. They, they're feeling pretty good about themselves here. And there's a minute 26 remaining here in the second quarter, and Mount Carmel area would dearly like to take another shot here and put something in the end zone. And again, you're starting to just slowly see here that the speed is beginning is beginning to become a difference in this football game here, even on a wet turf. Well, you know, you come out that first first set of downs. Both teams are are sky high. They're jacked up on all the emotion and everything else. And 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 this first series of downs does not dictate what's going to happen through the game. And you can see that maybe it's starting to wear on the on the Dunmore Bucks a little bit. Steve is to get in motion. Oh, this time we hand it to Veach going oh, the other yeah. way. Great, great And Veach will take it up to the 50-yard line, the midfield mark, where it's first and 10 once again from Mount Carmel area as they begin to chew up chunks of yardage here at the at the very end of the second quarter. Kervich brings the play in. You see here that we're starting to come back and, and with some misdirection plays. We get uh, Sebus in motion. He catches the ball, and then he takes off with it. He's in motion again, and we give it to Johnny Veach going in the opposite direction. Now, Sebus will be split out to the right side as he comes again in motion, and this time a flag, and i, I got to tell you, I don't know what that one is. I didn't see anybody move at all except... Unless we lined up offside. Yeah, that has to be the only thing we could see. The motion man came in motion, but he didn't do anything differently than he normally would. And they're going to call illegal motion on Mount Carmel area, but I, <clears throat> for the life of me, I don't yeah. know that. And we'll, Jose, I don't know if you had seen anything there either. Jose shaking his head no here. I don't know what that was. So it's going to move the ball back to the Mount Carmel area 45-yard line now back in our territory as it's first and 15 now with 57 seconds remaining here in the first half. Sebus back. Now we get a little bit of a blitz going here, and Sebus looks over the middle for Bailey, and Bailey stays on his feet, and that's another first, first down, down, ladies and gentlemen, at the 39-yard uh, line of the Bucks as Mount Carmel area now opening up the entire offense up here and letting the freshman yep. just throw the ball around and, the field. And one thing that we saw before in that Sebus deep uh, motion play here is that he gets triple teamed down here and it does leave the middle of the field wide open and that's where Bailey ends up catching the ball that time. Again, we go back in the pass formation. They send guy up the middle. We look over at Bailey and just tipped by Tricolo. That time Tricolo on the coverage of Bailey. And Tricolo, every bit the athlete that we oh, heard yeah. he was. He is on both sides of the ball, just a, a great athlete. So uh, the, the inner incompletion will stop the clock at 27 seconds and bring up a second down and 10 now for Big Red. Now that's, a, you know, Tricolo on defense was in the first couple, in the first quarter, uh, king on John Veach. But now he's all over the field. It, it doesn't matter who who's near the ball. Uh, he's in there making a tackle. John Veach that time on a delayed uh, release went straight down the field and was open. A big man back, and he slides it over. Oh, he slides it to Veach, and right through Veach's hands. 
Number 15 on the play was the judge covering. And nice coverage on John. But the incompletion now brings a third and 10. As Mount Carmel area looks content to, to, to air out this passing game here to end this first half. Well, you want you want to drive that stake in a little bit further. You you, you want to score here, especially, especially with the... Uh, uh, offense moving the ball as successfully as they are here in the second in the second half the pursuit on on this uh, Bucks team is is very very fast uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you might not see a screen play here third down and ten and Shinsky's gonna air it out down the middle he's got Sebas down the middle it's intercepted by Monahan. Monahan intercepts the ball to end the Mount Carmel area threat here. He's brought down immediately by Van Doren. The Mount Carmel area turns the ball over with the 14 seconds remaining here in the second quarter of play. And a big, big, big applause here from the Mount Carmel area side. They, we look at the at the Mount Carmel area side. There's about twice as many people oh, here definitely. as yeah. there are from the Dunmore side. So there's a big crowd here representing Mount Carmel area, and they're vocal out here as the defense will go on and maybe, I think, try to put an exclamation point here on the first half of play. Well, I'll tell you, that's not a bad play. You, you throw the ball, it's intercepted. It's intercepted on a six-yard line with, with, or on the 19-yard uh, line with, you know, uh, 14 seconds left. So that's safe. You can't do any better than that. And Dunmore's going to kill the clock. Yeah, they, <laughs> they weren't willing to do anything, Wayne. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, after one half of play here at, at the Wilkesbury Memorial Stadium, Mount Carmel area six, Dunmore Bucks zero. And we'll be back in short time, and Jose will give you all of his halftime stats. Back here right before the uh, second half of the game, this wonderful game that the Tornadoes are playing both offense and defense. We have Jose Gonzalo up here in the booth with us tonight, uh, going to give us the halftime stats. Hi, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. The first half for the Dunmore Bucks, 25 rushes for 91 yards, zero of one passing, total offense, 91 yards, six first downs. Uh, Mr. Tricolo, 16 for 59. For a guy that's averaging 200 yards a game, I think that was a great 200. It was about 250, I think, in the last two in games. The two playoff games, in the two over playoff 400. Games. Yes, yeah. he had over 470 yards. And for Mount Carmel, 21 rushing attempts for 107 yards, 5 of 13 passing for 87 for total offense, 194 yards, 11 first downs. Individually, Johnny Veach, 14 for 70. Nick Sebas, 4 for 29. Al Bailey, 3 for 10. Passing, Dave Shinsky, 5 for 13, 87 yards. Nick Sebas, two catches for 52 yards. Al Bailey, two for 28. Josh Kalia, one for eight. Uh, interesting, uh, John Veach, now with 70 yards, needs 47 yards to become only the third back ever in school history to go over 4,000 yards. Hopefully in a good second half or maybe a good run to start the second half would get him over there. Nick Sebas with 29, yard rushing, 29 yards rushing leaves him 70 yards from 2,000 in his career. Uh, interesting to me only that it, he would be the first player in school history to ever go 2,000 and 2,000. That is 2,000 rushing, 2,000 passing. And I think considering he has that big cast in his hand, I think he's doing a great job. Excellent. I, I, I'll tell you what, I think Nick Sebus is uh, intent very uh, uh, strong with this team tonight. Uh, he's come, uh, you know, leaps and bounds over uh, what he has done since the Line Mountain game. Definitely. He's getting used to his hand uh, being in the cast. And, and I think he came up with two big plays here uh, in that first half. 
Here's the replay. We have a replay here right now. Uh, Mr. McPhee is setting it up for us on the touchdown. If you take a look at the blocking on the interior of that line, we have center number 57, Swally, just standing his man up. We had, uh, I think the pulling guard was Matt Booker coming back to the left side. But also, as you look downfield, take a look at Matt O'Brien's downfield block from the right side down. And, and just a crushing block for John Veach to walk into that uh, end zone in that first half, Warren. Yeah, you, you, you see it right there. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. That's what you expect to see. Everybody does doing a job. And then Veach has to do one thing at the end of that play, and that's the cutback. And you can actually see that guy sliding past him. I mean, there was no way he could stop as quickly as Veach did and, and try to catch him as he slid by and Veach just stepped around and went into the end zone. So that's where we see the six points at. We're just about ready to start the second half of play. And ladies and gentlemen, the rain has now intensified again. It's now windy and rainy as the rain is coming down in a sheet and it's windy coming down probably, it looks like it's coming from right to left now almost. It's going to make the uh, passing difficult for both squads here in the second half. We see... All the umbrellas, a couple of them have folded up, in fact, in front of us in the windy conditions. So not the greatest night of football or for football, but Mount Carmel area not seem to be too daunted so far as far, uh, you know, as, far as the weather goes. Uh, on the offensive side, we have a little bit more success passing the ball than what the Dunmore Bucks have. Dave uh, getting more than enough time. I'll tell you what, it's the best pass protection I've seen all, all this year uh, in this intense and, and pressure game like this. And uh, Dave is being able to spot anybody on the field. And he's hit uh, Bailey over the middle there and John Veach over the middle uh, wide open and, and, and has some great success. Downfield, it's a little bit different throwing a long ball like that in, in this rain. And again, when the ball hangs up, uh, you know, it, you are susceptible to uh, some interceptions. The last interception that he did throw, there was nothing wrong with that down on the nine yard line. That was the end of the, uh, the first half. Uh, if the Tornadoes, again, want to, you know, they, they have to stop Tricolo. And after the first series of downs, it, it was a readjustment. And I think our two linebackers, Warren, had stepped up uh, their play a little bit. And that is just Senchak and, and Bailey. And the two of them are now coming up into the hole to meet uh, Tricolo before he even gets through it. And I think that is the key there. Tricolo took a couple hits in that first quarter and now is a little shy running the ball. Senchak dribbles it. It's live on the ground at the 38-yard line. It bounced off a Dunmore player as he trickled it down the field and surprised the Bucks a little bit. They'll recover the football at their own 39-yard line where it's first and 10 Bucks. But uh, a dangerous play there by the Bucks is they either did not expect, expect to have that happen well, or we didn't expect to do it one or I the other. I don't think uh, Vince did. Don't forget, we're playing with, with uh, sneakers for the turf here, and I'm sure he doesn't have a regular kicking shoe on. Split backfield, it goes to Tricolo. Tricolo's, or I'm sorry, that's Igo. The up back, Igo. Igo will pick up about two yards in a play. It'll bring up a second down and eight for the Bucks. And again, weather conditions just turning uglier and uglier. And cannot really understand the decision to play this football game tonight. This they, was not the best decision they could have they made. They have deteriorated. And, and, and it, the question is, why would they cancel four other games and, and have this one go on? But we're here, so we'll finish it out. Mancuso keeps it as he rolls out on the pass. He's going to be uh, brought down eventually down there by Lantini, but not before... He crosses over the midfield stripe and brings it into the Mount Carmel area 48-yard line. And there we saw the first time we've seen Mancuso actually roll out with the intent to run if he needed to do so. Yeah, we, what we needed there is uh, Ziggler got sort of caught up in, in the flow of the blockers and did not kick to the outside uh, the way his normal pursuit should be and try to keep uh, uh, the quarterback turned to the inside. The quarterback got around the end and picked up the first down. That time we were going to give the ball in the middle to Igo, but there was an offside penalty, a motion penalty, but no call. The Bucks clearly in a motion situation there. No call on the play, and the ball, the play will stand. Igo will pick up a yard, brings up a second down and nine. I'm sorry, pick up two yards, second down and eight. I but, don't know how they didn't call that one. I mean, that was clearly yeah. motion on the line there. Uh, Tricolo talking to Igo here, and I would assume he's going to get the ball this time. 
some of you go back to Tricolo and yeah. Tricolo again. Tricolo will pick up two yards on the play. It'll bring up a third and six. But Mount Carmel area is still tough on defense with Tricolo. They, they tried to, to change up a little bit by giving it to Igo a couple of times, the up back. Igo, not the same type of back that Tricolo is. Well, He's more of a plotter in the middle. What I, I would assume what the Bucks were hoping for is that initially we're coming down, we're going to key on, on Tricolo and sort of leave Igo alone, uh, just like we run now, Bailey up through the center, and that's what they tried to do uh, this time here. And you could see Tricolo talking to Igo on a blocking uh, scheme there when he ran the ball. Third and five, and it's going to be first and ten because Mount Carmel area drawn offside, although they're pointing. I believe it goes against us. That time, the Bucks would line up in about the tightest formation you possibly could line up in and still be together there. there it's, it's definitely against the defense. It'll bring up, uh, depending where they placed this, it was a long five. It's a first down. It's, it was five. So first and ten now at the Mount Carmel area just outside their 38-yard line as the Bucks have a little bit of life there now on the offside yeah, penalty. That's one thing you do not want to do. You don't want to give the, the Bucks uh, some momentum here. The defense must, you know, should stop them here, and that's what your plan is, to stop them on the first series of downs. Put Monahan in, in motion, but we're going to hand it to Igo. Igo becoming the featured back all of a sudden here in the middle. Igo will only pick up a yard. It'll bring up second down and nine. And the Bucks now... A little bit away from that original offense, but now that they're tr trying to move people around a little bit, they're putting Monahan in motion. They're doing some different things, but they're handing the ball to Igo. And my guess here is, is that if you're going to win this football game, it's going to be in the hands of number 28, Tricolo, yeah, not tri in Igo's hands. You have to stay with what what got you here, and, and Tricolo was the one. Again, Monahan in motion, fumble. fumble. The ball squirted out of the hands of uh, Mancuso. I can't see who picked it up but that was really a weird play in that the center that it popped right out of his hands. And Mount Carmel area has recovered it. Once again, the second fumble of the football game by the Bucks, the second time they have lost the ball. And number 52, Two. Brennan comes up with the ball. And that, that, I don't know what that was, because truly he never had control of the ball from the moment he touched it. It just And it squirted yeah. forward. Yeah, it Usually did. it goes down and went, it went completely forward. It had to go over the top of the center because he was already making a motion to step backwards on that. So Mount Carmel area takes over first and 10 on their own 36 yard line as Shinsky brings them up. <clears throat> now we're gonna go to Bailey. Bailey has a big hole, big hole on the right side. He takes it up to the 43 yard line. Gonna bring up a second down and three as he picks up seven yards on the play. That was a nice, nice opening that time okay, on the right side of the line. Going back to that fumble, that was Brown that picked up that fumble for us. I'm sorry, Brown? I yeah. thought it was 52. I gotta, I gotta give Brown credit for that. I apologize. Dave. Yeah, he changed jersey. Oh, he I'm was sorry. number 31. I, I made the mistake twice again now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, he's not, on our, see, he's not on our program. That's, that's I apologize. I should, I should remember him now. From here on in, I will. <laughs> I'm saying Brennan Brown. Okay, second down and two now and for the Red Tornado. First, we set up trips on the left. This time we go back to Bailey. This time Bailey right up the middle, up yeah. to the midfield stripe where it's first and ten. Mount Carmel area, and again, the offense now clicking and all cylinders. Bailey's the only back in the backfield. He's the only guy who can get the ball to give it to him. And he still didn't stop him. Well, we, we split everybody. We had a slot. We had a, a wide receiver to the right. We had trips going to the left. We spread the defense out, and that took Tricolo out of the out of the play totally. And uh, Al gets it back into the linebacking crew there, and, and enough to pick up that first down. And that's what you want. This time we pitch back to Bailey again. Bailey cuts it back. Bailey will pick up about two yards on the play, bringing up a second down and eight for Big Red. And Bailey now getting a little bit of a workout here. He must have went in and said, Coach, I'm, I'm not doing much. I'm kind of, you know, I'm just hanging running around. people over blocking. Yeah, run me. I'm only running people over blocking. Run me seven or eight times in a row to get me back in the game. Well, it, if anything, this this will give John Veach a, a little bit of rest time here. Uh, it, you know, John has been the workhorse uh, along with Al. And, uh, you know, your legs start to get weary at this point in the season. And uh, giving John a rest, and, and uh, don't be surprised if we don't come back with him. And here comes John around the end in a big hole around the right side as Veach Ooh, continues. Face mask there, I'll tell face you. Face mask goes down, there and, it is. and Veach will go out of bounds down at the 
about the 29-yard line of the Bucks, and then he'll tack on that uh, face mask penalty at the 7.06 mark of the third quarter. But again, a gaping hole yeah. on the right side of the line by Mount Carmel area. Yeah, you take a look there at O'Brien downfield, and, and, and we've seen O'Brien in that touchdown play making an excellent block downfield, and, and here he is again doing the exact same thing. This is a big one, folks. This is as ugly as a penalty gets on you. They drop the ball down just inside the Dunmore Buck 15-yard line where it'll be first and 10, Mount Carmel area. That was a big penalty there for the Bucks. Now we go to a full eye backfield, and we pitch it back to Veach behind Bailey. He picks and chooses his way, and he'll take it down to about the 10-yard line. It should bring up a second down and about five now for the Red Tornadoes as they are churning on all cylinders here to open up this second half of play. Yeah, you can see now that the Dunmore Bucks defensively must be getting a little weary. Their pursuit in the first series of downs was tremendous, going to the outside and containing. Now we're running back to the inside, but their pursuit to catch up to the ball is not as quick, and we're getting five yards past the line of scrimmage before, we're making, before they're making a hit. This time, Bailey right up the middle. Bailey right up the middle. It's Touchdown! Forced. Bailey up the middle, up the middle, up the middle. He knocked over as many guys as he could possibly yes. find. He then went in for the touchdown. Mount Carmel area 12, Dunmore 0 with the extra point attempt to follow. And that's as ugly and hard running as it oh, yeah. gets in the middle. You, you talk about Tricolo carrying the ball for the whole season like that. We have an Al Bailey that does the exact same thing. You take a look at him running up through the middle here. Some excellent blocking on the right-hand side. And as he breaks through, he gets hit by the, the defensive end about five yards off the line of scrimmage and just plows through him and, and a strong safety or a free safety back there tries to make the play and cannot. Mount Carmel area now will line up and go for a two point conversion here. They are not going to kick. They give it to Al Bailey, Bailey and Bailey says, okay, I'll do those two too. What yeah. the heck? I, and <laughs> that's as tough a running as you can. Watch this folks. Yeah. Here it comes right at you again. Here's the touchdown run. And look at this, look at this thing, boom. That was just a great touchdown yeah. run at the 629 mark of the third period. Mount Carmel area 14, the Dunmore Bucks zero. And this is everything we had hoped to see from Mount Carmel area tonight. Again, from a team that, you know, they say in, 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 uh, around that maybe they weren't ready to right. go this far. They, maybe they couldn't do it. Well, nobody told them because they believe they can do it. Well, here's here's the key. And, and Jose and, and you and I were talking about this at the, at the beginning of this game before we started this broadcast. And we felt that, you know, the, the, the wet field was going to even everything up. But the big the big turn here is the scheduling. You take a look at who they played, and you take a look at the tough schedule that we played, the AAA teams, uh, you know, the North Schuylkills, the Allentown Central Catholics, and the Sealings Groves, and, and take a look at who we played. Take a look who they played. They played a lot of single-A teams. Even though they're here, they garnished enough of points to get into this position. But I think the experience of playing the bigger teams does pay off, and here it is right here. You send Jack about to tee it off here. We'll see what he does this time. This time a, a little better kick as he kicks it directly to 41, Carlucci. And Carlucci comes right up the middle. He'll be brought down at the 36-yard line of the Bucks where they'll take over first and 10 as that big red defense trots onto the field. And they have been absolutely astounding ever since they stopped the Bucks at the five-yard line in the first quarter. Yeah, that was the turning point. And, and as we said, the, the momentum had turned from the defense, in fact, uh, if you remember there in the, in the second quarter, the Bucks intercepted the ball on the 30-yard line and could not move the ball even past the first down mark. Uh, and, I need, the, and the momentum shifted then back to the offense. I need to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, it's hard for you to see in this, that weather conditions are deteriorating by the moment as Tricolo takes the pitch back. Yesenchak will bring him down after a gain of a yard. It'll bring up second down and nine. But as I was saying, it is raining extremely hard right now with wind gusts probably in the 15 to 20 mile an hour range out here on the field. So it is getting more and more difficult to play football here tonight, even with the carpet. Yeah, as Jose just said, thank God for the carpet. Imagine if this was on a grass field somewhere. This time we give it right up the middle and he'll be stopped for a gain of about a yard again. This was Igo, I believe, in the yes. middle, 25. 
And I go getting a lot more work here in the second half than he did in the first half, but not uh, making a lot of, a lot of dents here. It's going to bring up a third down and six on the play for the Bucks. The ball sitting squarely at the 40-yard line of the Dunmore now, Bucks. Mon Monahan trotted off to the side of the field. He came back on, but also number 82. They bring in a smaller tight end this time, and they take number 85 off or 84. What you would think is a passing situation, and it is for Mancuso, and Mancuso was going to be brought down by Veach on a blitz. Bailey. Or, I'm sorry, Bailey. Van Mancuso had no, once again, I do no. not blame Mancuso here. That was a blitz of a linebacker, and as he turned with the ball, he was already hit. And you'll see here, ladies and gentlemen, on the, on the replay, what I'm saying. Look at the speed of this, of this line. Look at the linebacker shoot, and boom. He never even got his feet planned, and he went down. The ball all the way back at the Dunmore 35-yard line where it is fourth down and about 11 and uh, 84. <laughs> the big guy, uh, Benevich, will kick. And he is just he just hates the ball when he kicks because he gives it a whack. He's going to kick it, and it's going to bounce, a great bounce. It'll yeah. go out of bounds. That's a great kick. Well, <laughs> Let's see where he ends up at. He's marching up the field there. It's going to go out at the 20, just about Four. the 25-yard line of Mount Carmel area where they that, finally set it that down. Was, that happened. That looked like we were skipping a rock off the off yeah. the pond. You know, yeah. like it, as soon as it hit, it just it just shot. Oh, Benevich, he hates the ball. I mean, <laughs> he just kicks the, I, I the, the living the crap out of that yeah, thing does. when he goes. He, he doesn't take any prisoners when he kicks. He's got a rocket for a leg there. Mount Carmel area now takes over first and ten. Again, weather conditions are as ugly as you could hope here. And that time, Bailey slipped down right at the 25-yard line, and that's what I mean. You're starting to see this field now start to turn ugly, as not even this field can absorb yeah. the type of water that's falling down right now. Well, you see puddles, especially on the, on the sideline markers there. Uh, you can't even see the the, the one-yard, the 50-yard, the 52-yard markers. Uh, they're, they're just covered with water, and you see that when they're running, uh, the splashing that's going on. So the field is not draining. It's probably absorbed everything that it possibly could at this point. And we, you will notice that as you get closer to the sidelines, it gets worse. It's wetter on the sidelines than it is in the middle. There's a nice pitch to this field. This time we give it to Veach on an end around. Veach cuts up the middle. Nice play, nice run by Jonas. He brings it up to the 32-yard line where it'll bring up a third down and about three for the first down. But a nice seven-yard pickup that time by John. And he's having a whale of a football game along with Bailey out there. Well, you know what we did? We took we took the... We 17 for 91, is it? 19, 17 for 99 yards, one yard shy, yeah. shy of 100 yards so far for Mr. Veach here. We, we've taken the pressure off, John, a little bit here by running a, a misdirection plays uh, instead of the straight pitch and trying to get him around to the outside. This time it's Veach again, a flag down. Veach will pick the first down up, but it's going to go against Big Red, I'm sure. Yeah. Flag went down into that middle of the, of the field, which is always going to be a, almost always an offensive penalty. Veach had picked up the first down. He had enough for it, and we'll see where they're going to march us back to here. There are three minutes and four seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And we want to look down this line, and I want to talk about a couple of kids here. You know, we see uh, number, big number 71 in there, Schaffler playing. And then we see on the other side, uh, O'Brien, of course, we saw O'Brien get hurt. Yeah. And I, I told you guys, you know, we, we talked about O'Brien a little bit about that comeback from the, from the serious knee injury. Serious. And there he gets hurt. He strained a ligament uh, last week, right at the, near the end of the game there. We saw him come out of the game a little bit. And to see him in there today and playing and playing at, at a top performance, I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't missed the beat out nope. there. Again, I, I got to attribute the courage that that kid has to go out there and play football. He just wants it so bad you can't stop him. Well, one that, another one we see uh, tonight is the right tackle. Number 70, John Bartles back into playing the, the whole game so far. Third and 16 now as Shinsky looks looks the pass over the middle and he's uh -huh. gonna be, inter no, uh, Drop. Trickolo almost intercepted the ball. Last time we had all three guys and they had all four guys in a, in a little bit of a party there at the 35-yard uh, line. So Mount Carmel area is forced to punt for the first time. We've not punted in this football game. Well, we'll, we'll see what we can do here. Now, you know, the Bucks are now down. There's only three minutes left. They're down by two touchdowns. And and I would assume that uh, the Bucks are going to put some pressure on Dave Shinsky. Right, here. we're punting into the stiff win, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it is as ugly a win as you can want. They almost block it, but they don't. He gets a nice kick now. It bounces right at the Mount Carmel 40-yard line. You see the water splashing there at the, at the sideline. So Shinsky with a nice punt, 
and gets it out of there into the teeth of a, just a, a murderous wind right now as umbrellas are still folding in front of us. We look down the field, sideline to sideline, from the numbers in, from the numbers to the sideline, okay? It's soaking wet there. That's the worst parts of the field right now. So we'll continue to watch the conditions here. It is raining harder and harder as this game continues. And the defense from Mount Carmel area now put back on that field and told, let's keep it where it is. We'll see what the Bucks have to offer here as they start from the 39-yard line of the Red Tornadoes, and they go right to the big guy, Tricolo, who churns up some yardage, and he'll take the ball down to about the 36-yard line. A gain of two on the play. It'll bring up a second down and eight. Now, Trickle, if you can hold him to their four yards, you're you're having a good, you're doing a good defense there. Now, he did not carry the ball that much in this half so far. It's all been Igo, which really surprises me that they're down by two touchdowns, and and Trickle has definitely uh, gotten done more to this position. Now, look, look at this uh, in the season. I know. <coughs> look it, at the rain now. This is, is the worst like we've seen sheet. it. Just a pelting rain as Mancuso goes back to throw, and he throws downfield to Monahan, but he was way over his head. Well covered by Veach on the play, but the rain now becoming the story, and it's actually forcing people out of the stands. Yeah. It is raining so hard right now. Yeah, and, they, and, and you know, it's, it's no secret. Uh, if you took a look at the weather forecast uh, all day long, they were calling for heavy torrential downpours, uh, you know, later on in the evening from about 7, 8 o'clock on. So, you know, this should be no surprise to anybody, including the PIAA. A minute 52 remaining in the third quarter. It's third down and seven. And this time, Ooh. Tricolo, and Tricolo is going to... So he get turns the corner. corner. My goodness, how did he get around the corner? Sebus had to take him out. They had him bottled up, and there you have it. There's why Tricolo gained 2,400 yeah. yards in the season. I don't know how he got around that corner, but he picks the first down up and puts the ball down at the Mount Carmel area 17-yard line in a great run by Tricolo. Yeah, that, that was his biggest play so far uh, in this game, even in the first half or first quarter when he when he did carry the ball. But if you take a look here, we, we spin him around, and there's three guys there to make some hits on him, and, and uh, Sebus is the one that knocks him out. Tricolo again with the ball. And this time, number 71, the big guy, Dave Schoffler. Schoffler, is going to bring him down. He crosses over the 15 to the just about the 14-yard line of the Mount Carmel area to bring up a second down and eight for the Bucks. Time continues to tick away. One minute, 25 seconds remaining here in the third quarter of play. Now we saw in the first quarter that uh, the Bucks did not try anything different down there. They tried to run uh, Tricolo both left and right, just like they did there. And Schoffler did make the stops back in, in the first quarter. Tricolo, and this time Moreau said, hi, Mr. Tricolo, yep. how's the line of scrimmage look to you? Because that's where you're staying. Ball still sitting at the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up a third down and maybe a long seven now as he might have inched a yard or less out there. Yeah, Dave Brown was there and, and uh, uh, Cuff, uh, Nicky was also in, in the position. They had the hole all blocked up. I don't know where Tricolo thought he was going. Uh, you know, the coach from Dunmore now is trying to run Tricolo both to the right side and to the left with no success here. Surprisingly, the ball sitting there uh, without any cover or anything. It's just soaking wet. It's raining so hard. As Mancuso brings up with a third and seven, and he goes back to pass, and he's going to do that run where he did before, only this time he's not going to run. Oh, oh, my goodness. Number 71 for the Red Tornadoes. Schaffler pancakes him <laughs> down at the 16-yard line. Oh, that was ugly. Take a look at Ziggler. Ziggler is the one here that makes the play, and what, what he does not do is he does not get tied up with number 25, Igo, as the blocker, and he does kick to the outside and brings the quarterback back to the inside. Loss of yardage, and that's the end, ladies and gentlemen, of the, four, of the third period of play with Mount Carmel area leading the Dunmore Bucks 14-0. The Dunmore Bucks facing a fourth and... Just a real long nine here for the first down as Mancuso is absolutely pulverized two yards behind the line of scrimmage to the end of the quarter.
So uh, a nice a nice third quarter here in, in just an absolute river of rain. Well, I'll tell you that uh, Mancuso is, I think, feeling the effects of uh, some of the blitzing by, by Bailey and, and by Yasenchak and some of those hits that he has had. Uh, we take a look at him now trying to turn the corner here with uh, Ziggler and tiptoeing and it doesn't seem like he he wants to get into the mix too too much if he can turn the corner he will and he is deadly we had seen him pick up 15 yards in the first half on a similar play but uh, not anymore as soon as we contain him to the inside yeah. he sort of tiptoeing because uh, if you take a look at that hit from Shoffley <laughs> which you know just rattled his teeth there we're uh, starting did an excellent job we're starting to see Wayne, uh, Wayne uh, Jose's pointing out I can, you can see it clearly now on your TV screen the rain oh, is yeah. raining so hard now that it's, the water's beginning to lake up and puddle up here across the field in different spots. It picks it. It's not universal, but there are some places that are now but underwater here at Wilkesbury Memorial. The key Memorial. here is it's in the end zone where it should not be. You know, you try to run a pass play down into that corner, and, uh, you know, you, you might get someone hurt here. This was not a great decision to, to play this game on a night like this. Okay, a big, a big fourth down. It's fourth down and nine. The ball on the Mount Carmel area, 16, as Mancuso drops back to pass. A lot of time this He's time for Mancuso, a lot of time. Uh, he threw an interception. Oh, <laughs> and Sheamus will be tripped up right at the five-yard line. <laughs> Might have been one you wanted to bat down, but, yeah. hey, you don't do that in the big game. So but, uh, an interception of Mancuso to end that, that uh, drive. Mount Carmel area will take over on its own five-yard line, unfortunately, where it'll be first and ten. And give me a quick chance to tell everybody, ladies and gentlemen, that this is WKMC-TV broadcasting directly from the campus of Mount Carmel area high school. We are over a fiber optic uh, cable system. We are an instructional fixed cable service, and you catch us every Wednesday night, 8 o'clock, channel 13, courtesy of the service electric cable system. And, and Bailey. Bailey is broken loose in the middle, still on his feet, and Bailey takes it over the 25-yard line to the 28-yard line, where it'll be first and 10, and Bailey is, is making a statement out here yeah. tonight, guys. Ma Bailey was hit by uh, uh, Trickolo there uh, as he came through and ran the exact same way that Trickolo does. You hit me, I'm keeping my balance. Watch the shot he takes from number 28 here. Watch, boom, boom and right he's there. still up. And he's still up and picks up an extra five yards. That's tough running by Al Bailey that we know. Okay, Veach with the ball now. As Veach tries to step around the end, he'll be brought down for short yardage. Pick up about two on the play, bring up a second and eight. And, and Jose, what was that one now? Nine for 60 now. Nine carries for 60 yards for Bailey here, entering into the fourth quarter play as, again, he's ha having an outstanding football game along with, with John, John back Beach. there. Ten, ten yards a carry. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you give a kid a ball and, and let him, you know, pick up that many yards. No, I'm sorry. Six yards a carry on that. You're only you're uh, a math teacher, yeah, right? Yeah, I thought yes. he said six. six no, no, 60. Problem. no, that's Nine no problem. for 60. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to cut, you, cut nice. your tenure you're just, again. You're here. trying to get back at me for, for 14 games ago. Motion on that play from Mount Carmel area in a five-yard penalty. And they, have ha they have managed to hurt themselves a few times like that, but uh, nothing that's really caused them a major problem as it'll bring up a first, I'm sorry, it'll bring up a second down and 13 or so. It should be about second and 13 now for the first down. The ball drops back to the 24-yard line. The one thing I will say about this field, it's the first time all year that we've looked at a field that I could actually tell you the yard marker no matter <laughs> where it is. I mean, it's it's a great field for being able to tell where you're at. I go from wild losing last week where I couldn't have guessed where we were within 10 yards most of the time to finally get into a field that I actually know exactly where the ball is. We put Sebus in motion and we pitch to him. as he, We tried to bring him up outside. Now he's picking his way up a little bit there. He'll cross over the 25-yard line and probably get to the 26. Pick up about three yards in a play. It'll bring up third down now and 10 for the Red Tornadoes. Tough play by, by Sebus. He is running really tough. And, and remember, ladies and yeah. gentlemen, he's running with a broken hand out there. So I'll tell you, you want to talk about courage, I mean, my he, goodness. He, he did it. We, did, we ran that play once and a half. He took a good shot. He picked up about eight or nine yards on it, took a good shot. Uh, also, the two pass plays that he went up for and caught were key plays. Shinsky will bring him up. Shinsky goes back to pass on third and ten. He looks over the middle, and he's got... Van Doren 
and Van Doren is extremely close to the first down. I'm not sure if he got it or not, but he's very close. They moved it back. That's a first down. I, I still, even with the move back, I think he's got a first down, but they're going to look real hard at it. Let's see where it, it's a first down, guys. That's, no, I don't know. I'll tell you what, he was up a little bit I thought he was. For, yeah, I thought he was further up from where yeah. they spotted the ball, but that's he, neither here nor there right now. Because it'll make an interesting decision coming up here for well, Coach he, Williams, <laughs> who has been his no, first it's, down. That's first Come down. on, guys, you're doubting. You made me doubt myself on that one. What are you guys looking at here? I'll tell you what, I'm, I am the youngest guy in the booth right now, so I can make these calls yet. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. <laughs> I forgot Dave. <laughs> we don't have Dave in the booth with us. Dave McPhee, of course, right next to us. First time all season. I forgot you on that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dave took offense to that, to that last time. <laughs> all right, we're at the uh, 9 minute and 27 mark of the fourth period. Mount Carmel area coming back up to the line of scrimmage with a first and 10. And every second that ticks by now is an enemy of the Bucks. Handoff inside the Veach. He steps over a guy there, and that was a nice play Great. by John Veach. He's brought down by 62, Patrick Mon, but nice play that time by Veach as he just kind of stepped over a guy. I'm sorry, that was 52. Let's give credit where it belongs. That's early who brought him down, but a nice play, and he picks up just about five yards. It'll bring up down a second and five now for that, the Red Tornadoes. The key to that play is that we ran that a number of times, and that's where we run trips left, and we put Sevis in motion. And what happens to the defense is they also flood the same side that we're flooding, and it leaves the right-hand side, and we're hoping for Jonathan just to break back behind the uh, defense to, to score. Bailey. This time they're going to catch Bailey just about in the backfield there. The ground caused a fumble, folks. Come on. A little bit of roughing around there, but on his, on, especially on this kind of service, the ground causes a fumble a lot more than you'd like as he hit the ground. And he'll only pick up, if he did, he picked up a yard. Maybe not. He might have got to the line of scrimmage. I'm going to just say third and five still, just to be on the safe side. Ball sitting at the Mount Carmel area 43-yard line. This time we fake it to, to Zebus, and there's John Veach breaks into the middle. He'll take it over to midfield mark all the way down to the Oof. Dunmore 43-yard line where it'll be first and 10, and that was a pretty play that, that time. Great play, I'll tell you. Again, we run trips left. We had two slot men over here running trips left. We put Zebus in motion. Watch here the fake on, on, on this. And, it, and it's it is. a great fake. Hundred and nineteen yards in the night, and ladies and gentlemen, we're proud to say that John Veach has gone over four thousand yards. Ooh. How many players did that? Three. Only three players in Mount Carmel area history. His brother Gary is <laughs> oh my goodness. Bailey and Bailey. <laughs> oh, you gotta love this kid. <laughs> I'm sorry, he just will not no. go down. He is running so well out there. He thinks that's a six-yard gain. It'll bring up a second down and four, but Bailey is just intent now on, on yeah. hitting as many guys as he can. You just do not grab Al Bailey by the back of the shirt like that and think you're Look at he's dragging him down on his feet for an extra three who, yards. Who are the three guys again now? Brett, Gary Dimnick, John okay, John Veach, Brett Veach, and Gary Dimnick. How's that for a family? Two, two guys. This is the earliest anybody ever got there. First time as a junior. First time as a junior. Remember, folks, he's only a junior. He's got over 4,000 yards, and that is quite an accomplishment. Ooh, <laughs> that was ugly. <laughs> the freshman slaps his helmet and says, oh, I don't think I belong there. That'll bring up a third down now, and that's going to push it back some. Should bring up a third and seven now for the Red Tornadoes as they collide in their own backfield and lose yardage. I think that was the hardest hit Dave took all night. <laughs> Yeah, he, he stepped right into the back on that play, not remembering which way the play was running. <laughs> As John just stepped back over 4,000 now. But <laughs> I'm sure he'll pick that back up, but uh, uh, just our hats off to John Veach. It's just incredible, absolutely incredible what that young man has done so far at Mount Carmel area. And remember, he's got a whole year to go. Veach with the ball. He'll pick up about two yards on the play. It'll bring up... 
fourth down now, and it's going to bring up fourth down and a good five yards. Cannot say enough about him, ladies and gentlemen. I know there's not enough time here, but just try to try to think about what this kid just accomplished here tonight. Try to see what that is, and that is absolutely amazing. We also have another tidbit here. Next week will be our 1,000th football game, ladies and gentlemen. 1,000 football games in our in our storied history. If we win tonight, we'll have a winning percentage over a thousand games of 716. Try to think about that for a while, folks, because that's about as good as you're ever going to see. And that is just a tribute to every athlete that ever put a red and white helmet on and took the field here. It's just an amazing accomplishment. A penalty on a play, Jose. What was that? Did you see what they were calling or just, I don't know what we did there, but it's going to bring up fourth and nine now. And Mount Carmel area will elect to punt the ball and try to pin the Bucks back deep in their own territory as Shinsky goes in the punt formation. And the Bucks look like they may want to come after this thing again. No, they don't. As Shinsky gets it off, nice you see the water punt. splashing. Nice kick, nice. and Monahan takes it down at the five. Monahan goes down, down at the, the six-yard line, and great punt coverage by Big Red. As you got uh, Moreau's uh, down there, Dillo and Lentini and came out of there, Matsura. Dillo, Matsura. They oh. just set up a wall at about the seven yard line that, that Monaghan could not get through. And it's a great punt on a, on a terrible night. Uh, Dave made sure that his hands are dried at the ball, did not slip, and, and got a beautiful punt down to the four yard line. First and 10 for the Bucks. the ball on their own six yard line, fourth quarter, exactly four minutes and 50 seconds remaining in this football game. This game, a PIAA 2A quarterfinal match. Tricolo, and Tricolo trying to get to the outside where he does, and he's still on his feet, and again, he is just so elusive to try to bring down. He takes the ball all the way up to the 22-yard line, but there's a flag on the field, I believe. I can't, there's a shoe on the field. I'm not sure if that's a flag along with it. No, it looks like the flag, no. I can't tell what that is. It's oh, a, flag. a flag right there. He's standing at it. That's holding against the Bucks. So a nice play by Tricolo is negated. Yeah, it was a tackle on Bailey right there. That's where the hold came in at. The penalty, unfortunately, will only put them back to the three. So it's not a real big penalty. But it negates the gain that Tricolo had. Though. Right. And now you're going to bring up a first down here. And yeah, it does sit down at the three-yard line. So it'll be first down and 13 now for the Bucks at their own three yard line and weather conditions have lightened up a little bit folks it is not raining quite as hard you can actually see the person next to you now <laughs> <laughs> officials are calling a timeout there for whatever reason I have no idea why they're calling a the timeout they're all checking their clocks there and writing things down but I'm not sure what we just did there coach Williams goes out onto the field I don't think we called the timeout I think Dunmore did. You think? I didn't see them do it either. But certainly time, the ultimate enemy of the Bucks here, as this game begins to wind down into the final minutes, they're down 14-0, and they're about as far away from their goal line as you want to be. And it, uh, These two teams, the last time they met was in 1989 in the Eastern uh, Conference Class A semifinal game, and, and Dunmore won the game 14-12. That was up at Dunmore, if we yep. remember it. And the previous time was 1973, 15-6. The Tornadoes take the Eastern Conference Championship. At that time, the Eastern Conference was just like the state championship. Pitch back to Tricolo. He took the pitch in his own end zone. He's going to keep moving, yeah. but he's moving back to the sixth, the original line of scrimmage. Yeah. It'll bring up second down and a little bit more than 10. He didn't get quite back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring second down and just 10 and a half. I, I'll tell you why, you have to give you, you have to tip your hat to the defensive line here tonight because uh, right off the bat, they, they stopped Tricolo here and have continued to do so throughout this, this second half and have done an outstanding job. You know, you give him 15 yards and that's good, but we've certainly stopped everything that he tried to do. He threw it to the big guy, the tight end, 84, Benevich, the guy who, who just hates the ball when he kicks, but the ball was short, and Benevich didn't get enough, couldn't get down far enough to pick it off the turf. It'll bring up a third down, a little bit more than 10 now for the Bucks at their own six-yard line. 
Good play to call there. We were, we were sort of intent on stopping anything coming up through the center, and, and the tight end did have an open spot. He did hit the seam, but again, as we said, the inexperience of the quarterback to throw the ball, as noted right there, going to 84. Third down. Again, Mancuso drops to his end zone. Where Ooh, he is brought safety. down. Safety. That's safety. a safety. Moroz has caused the safety, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, right, Mickey. At the 354 mark, Mancuso goes down in the end zone for two points. Mount Carmel area now struts out to a 16 nothing lead, and that just about is oh. the topper, ladies and gentlemen, as Big Red has now taken complete control of this football game. And watch Moreau's, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, as he will not let Mancuso get back out of the end zone. I'll tell you what, he had beat... <laughs> Uh, Igo and Tricolo to their blocking positions on that play there. And I think the ball was going to the tight end to the left out into the flat because Mancuso turned right away and was looking there. But but uh, Mickey with his speed had cut right behind the two blockers and makes the tackle. Uh, it, it's it's unbelievable that at this point they're taking uh, the Dunmore Bucks are taken definitely out of their game plan. Uh, Tricolo was their man all season long. And you can see by the inexperience and how slow the quarterback is setting up in his pocket and trying to identify who his primary receiver is supposed to be. And, of course, it's the speed of the defense here that has definitely taken over this game. These kids have played their heart out. Everything you could ever hope for from a young football team. They're in the quarterfinal match of the state championship series. Now up 16-0, and the Bucks have got to kick back to us. 13 kicks off, Sotile, and he'll kick it to Bailey, who's still on his feet, and Bailey just, oh my goodness gracious, Bailey takes it down to the Dunmore 34-yard line where it'll be first and 10, and he just is not going to stop. He is no. having the game of his life. And, uh, no, it doesn't look like anybody wanted to tackle him there. Uh, he picked his holes, uh, you know, juking left and right a little bit, a couple head fakes going down, and uh, finally being tackled on the... Uh, 34-yard uh, line. Three minutes and 46 mi seconds remaining in this football game as Mount Carmel comes out first and 10. Shinsky's got Bailey and Veach behind him. And he pitches back to Veach. Veach steps over a guy. He'll take it down over the 30-yard line down to the buck 29-yard line. Some, It'll be second and five. Some great blocking there. Uh, uh, we have Matt Booker, the right guard, kicking out. Sean Thomas was the pulling guard, and he had actually nobody to hit until he got down into the linebacking crew of the, of the Bucks. Take a look at number 64 going through. Nobody there, nobody there, and he's actually down there looking for somebody. Shinsky will bring him up, the freshman. <laughs> Brings him to the line of scrimmage. It's second down and five. And off the Veach, right up the middle. Veach continues to churn oh, for yards as he cuts he's to the outside. The Veach, ah. will, he slips, and I told you, folks, he's in it. That's a lake over there. He goes down at the nine-yard line of the Bucks as he tried to turn on the sideline. It's first and goal. First and goal from the nine, and we are at the three-minute mark here of the football game as Mount Carmel area now threatens once again. And it looks like it looks like somebody sounded an air raid siren over on the Dunmore side because they kind of stood up in mass there and just walked out of the stadium. Shinsky will bring him up. <clears throat> Pitch back to Veach. Veach comes left this time, stumbles a little bit, and Veach will take it all the way down to the two-yard line where it'll be second down to one yard line. It's second and one now for the Red Tornadoes. Take a look at John on that play. He's looking, looking, he's trying to get to the outside. And his key there was that he waited until the very last second to split the two defenders. And it was his speed that carried him down there because they never expected him to make that move. Second down and goal from the one as Mount Carmel area is about to come up to the line of scrimmage and break their huddle. Veach and Bailey in the backfield. Now Carmel area in absolutely no hurry right now to do anything as they look back. He's going to hand it to Veach, and Veach is going to take it in for the touchdown. So, ladies and gentlemen, now at the 1 minute and 43 mark of the football game, it is now Mount Carmel area 22, Dunmore 0 as 
the big man Thomas will come out to attempt the extra point, and that's the football game, folks. The Dunmore books, Bucks know it, Mount Carmel area, Red Tornadoes know it. Just a matter of playing out these last few seconds here as Thomas lines them up. Thomas had his only attempt of the evening blocked right there in the first quarter, so we'll see how he does on this kick. And he got it blocked again. This is the number 82. Uh, Adam Gallagher, the tight end, came from the far side and blocked it. So with that blocked uh, extra point attempt, the score remains Mount Carmel area 22, the Dunmore Bucks 0. to tag a buck and I'll tell you what yeah. they certainly played this game uh, right from the kickoff you could see this is the first time all season long as we watched them come out of the tunnel out there uh, across the way that they looked intent on playing a football game uh, they weren't jumping around they were holding hands they were they were walking down with some confidence you know and and, and that's the first time this season that we had seen them do that and, and of course it carried right through this game yeah, this has been a, just an absolute fine performance on both sides of the football. Defensively, they absolutely smacked the Bucks. a team that was awesome offensively, right. just unstoppable right. on offensively. 32 points a game, Jose tells me they were scoring. They've scored a big goose egg so far here tonight. As Jacinczak, Jacinczak boots it up, it's going to bounce, and it's bouncing right Ooh, into the end zone. the end zone. Nice straight. There you go. So it's going to come out to the 20-yard line. I was going to say, that is the first touchback. It does. I looked at Jose, and I thought, I never saw him do that so far. So he puts it into the end zone, puts the Bucks out to the 20-yard line, where they'll take over first and 10 and a minute and 43 seconds remaining here in the football game. And the only thing left here in this game is for Mount Carmel area to celebrate and then decide who it is they're going to play. Of course, the other team... In this bracket that are playing the other two teams are Northern Lehigh and DeLone Catholic. We do not, of course, know which one of those teams is winning, but we will we will play either one of those two teams in the Eastern semifinals. Oh, I'm sorry, the Eastern finals. Really. Finals, right. This is semi. Yeah, this is the semifinals now. It will be the finals of the East next week, and it will, the, the, that'll be determined, of course, by all kinds of things. Of course, none of it will we'll, we'll have any say in, so we'll wait and see. You just got to watch the, the news. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, of course, is you're seeing this on a Wednesday night, folks. Uh, Supper Club is alive and running on Thursday night. You want to be there now because this is when it all happens. Supper Club, 6.30, Matucci's in the back room. You want to be there for all the players and the coaches as we face either Northern Lehigh or DeLone Catholic as we continue our defense of the PIAA 2A state championship. Tricolo with the ball. He picks up about two yards in the play. He'll bring up a third down and five for the Bucks. The big story, of course, is Veach and Bailey and the freshman, of course, with, with, with Sebus in the backfield now. We saw him in a, in a number of different positions and either running the ball or decoying the ball. He kept the Bucks off and balance, playing ball. with a broken hand, catching the ball with a broken hand. I cannot say enough about the young line. I can't yeah. say enough about O'Brien and that group and, and uh, Bartle playing Bartle coming back coming from those back. injuries. Uh, uh, Dave Schaffler coming out and, and playing an excellent defensive game tonight also. That's what it's all about as Monaghan takes the end around. And Monaghan's still on his feet. He'll cross the 30 up to the 32-yard line where he'll pick up the first down for the Bucks. Unfortunately, he didn't get out of bounds for the Bucks, So the clock will continue to tick as they line up here first and 10. I look down at the far scoreboard, and there are 18 seconds remaining on the clock, 17 now. The Bucks in no position or, or do not want to stop the clock. I believe we'll see them play one more play they're, they're, as Mancuso they're, brings they're it in. They're breaking their chin straps. So. Actually, they're not they're going, going to. They're not coming to the line of scrimmage. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The PIAA semifinal Eastern game, Mount Carmel area, 22 
Dunmore, zero, as the defense continues. We're going to come to Jose now, and he's going to give us some very interesting stats. You're going to want to hear these, so here we go, Jose. You're live. Okay, Warren, for the Dunmore Bucks, 44 attempts on the ground for 139 yards. Mr. Tricolo, 24 carries for 93 yards, held them under 100. It was probably the first time of the year, although we don't know that for sure. 0 for 4 passing, I believe the first time we've shut anybody out passing since Cocalico in 94 when they were 0 for 6 in our first run for a state championship. Great job by the t defense. TJ Schultz taking over for Charlie. Uh, uh, I for Connolly, Connolly, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, doing, we forgot him already. Job <laughs> getting better every week. Uh, on offense for Mount Carmel, 43 rushes, 250 net yards on the ground. The, the young Dave Shinsky, 6 of 15 for 98 yards. The freshman. The freshman Dave Shinsky, 6 of 15. But better than that, no mistakes, no fumbles, a little bump in the, back, in the backfield, nothing serious. Individually rushing, you saw Johnny V tonight make history for Mount Carmel. 27 carries, 152 yards. Third back in history to ever go over at 4,000 yards. First junior ever to go over 4,000 yards. Al Bailey in a great game, 11 carries, 68 yards. Nick Sebus in an all-around super performance, showing why he is still the player of the year. Five for 32 yards rushing. Receiving, Bailey, 28. Number 28, two for 28, Kalea one for eight, Nick Sebus two for 52, and Matt Van Doren one for 11, 18 first downs. You can't say enough about the performance of the Big Red tonight. Moving on to the winner of the Northern Lehigh DeLone Catholic game next week. Mount Carmel area is ending this game at uh, 10 and three now. The Bucks coming in undefeated, of course, at 12 and 0. They go to 12 and one and their season is over. So uh, our hats off to the Bucks and of course Jack Enzies, uh, an old foe, an old Eastern Conference foe, as That's a matter right. of fact. So uh, we wish them the best of luck next year, because <laughs> next year is next year. We wish ourselves the best of luck next week. Of course, read the paper, watch for it, watch Mount Carmel area live at 7:30 in the mornings. If you can find out who we're going to be playing, then it'll either be those, one of those two teams. We believe those games were canceled. Of course, they're probably being.